Now in this example then, just to recap, we've got the weight x grams of soup put in a tin by machine A is normally distributed with a mean of 160 grams and a standard deviation of 5 grams. And the tin is selected at random. And what we've got to do is find the probability that this tin contains more than 168 grams. Now you might like to uh, pause the video and just give this one a go. You can always come back and check your working against mine. Okay, let's see how you got on if you did have a go. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do when I'm dealing with the normal distribution is to draw a couple of graphs. One is for our random variable x and the other is the standardized normal distribution. So we've got this distribution here. x is already defined as being a normal distribution. We're told that it's got a mean of 160 grams. So that's the first parameter there. And then a standard deviation of 5 grams. And the second parameter is always the variance, the standard deviation squared, in other words. So you could either write 5 squared or you could write 25. That's up to you. So here we've got the mean. So I'd want to mark that in as 160. And now we've got to work out the probability that the tin contains more than 168 grams. Well, 168 grams is clearly going to be to the right of 160, so I'm just going to mark it in, say, there. We'll mark that in as 168. So what we're after is the probability of being more than 168 grams, and it's represented by the area then to the right of 168. Now what I'd want to do next is to project this value of 168 back down onto the standardized normal distribution, something like that. And we've got our value here, observed value z. This is our observed value little x. Let's just put that that equals little x. So we still need this area then to the right here. Now to do this, what I need to do is work out what this observed z value is. And we should be familiar with the transformation that z always equals the observed value minus the mean all over the standard deviation, sigma. So when we fill in these values, we see that the observed value is 168, and then minus the mean, mu, which is 160, and then we're dividing this all by the standard deviation, which we're told is 5. And if you work this out, you find that you get a z value of 1.6. Now remember that z represents the number of standard deviations that the observed value is above the mean. So we're talking about 1.6 standard deviations above the mean. So we're down then to work out the probability. Let's just draw a line down here. We're down to work out the probability then that x is greater than 168. And this is going to be equivalent to working out the probability that z is greater than 1.6. So let's just put that in, that z is greater than 1.6. Now to work out this value, we need to draw on normal distribution tables. And I've got a, an ex extract here, that in your tables you should see something like this with a diagram most probably drawn, where it gives you the probability of being less than a given value of z. So what I would do is look up in my z column, z being 1.6. The tables I was looking in had 1.60. And they gave the probability of being less than that particular value of z was 0.9452. So do check out your tables for something like that. But this gives this area here, okay? So really, we need to do 1 minus the probability of z 
being less than 1.6. 1 minus because the whole area comes to 1. So 1 minus the area to the left of 1.6. So some teachers, some formula books also write this statement in another way, the commutative distribution function phi and you could write phi of 1.6. That's up to you. You don't have to write this in, but you quite often see this notation as well. But whatever, whether it be phi of 1.6 or the probability that z is less than 1.6, we can read it from the tables and it is going to be 0.9452. And if we carry out that subtraction, we end up with 0.0548. All right, so hopefully that uh, gives you some idea then how to go about that particular type of question. All right.